Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The master cast is a replica of the denture supporting area of the edentulous mouth as produced from a final impression. You see before you a final maxillary impression in regular bodied rubber base. This impression was produced from an actual patient. You will notice that the peripheries of this impression are rolled here in the labial region as well as in the buccal extension. This roll is created by the contact of the impression material against the labial and buccal vestibule and the lateral aspects of the patient's cheek. Next step is to paint on the acrylic resin portions of the tray some sticky wax. The purpose of this wax is to help unite the boxing rope to the impression. Following around here in the labial, extending into the buccal area of the tray, paint a small amount of this sticky wax. After you have completed painting with the sticky wax, we then next can attach the boxing rope starting in the posterior region, around the tuberosity region, up into the buccal flange area, proceeding on into the anterior region here. You will note that when this wax is softened, it attaches to the sticky wax and to the tray quite easily. The final union of the boxing rope to the impression is performed using the hot end of the number seven spatula. Now the excess rope can be removed by cutting this area with your scalpel blade then readapting and molding the boxing rope. Now with the hot end of a number seven spatula we can seal the boxing rope to the impression starting here in the labial region and proceeding around through the buccal notch area into the buccal flange region. We can continue this activity around to the other side and complete the wax to tray union. After sealing the wax boxing rope around the periphery, approximately one to two millimeters below the borders of the impression, the now waxed portion can be united to boxing strips. The boxing strip is passed through the flame in order to slightly soften this wax. The impression is positioned in order to create a base to the master cast, which is approximately one half inch in thickness. As you form the boxing strip around the boxing rope, you will notice that there is some excess to this strip. You can double the strip upon itself, and where it comes to rest, you can seal this again using the hot end of the number seven spatula. After sealing the end of the boxing strip, it is joined to the boxing rope from the inferior aspect of the impression. This provides a much easier approach to these waxes for purposes of sealing. We continue around, joining the waxes to completion. With the sealing of the boxing strip to the boxing rope, 
This completes the preparation of the maxillary impression and boxing. We are now ready to pour the master cast. First, let us review some of the things that we have done in boxing this maxillary impression. We have created an area that will subsequently become the landing edge. We have also positioned the maxillary impression within the wax strip in order to create a half inch base height. You will notice here that the maxillary impression is positioned so that the superior border of the wax strip is approximately one half inch superior to the impression. It is sealed so the stone will be contained within the wax and it is now ready to pour the master cast. In boxing the mandibular impression and preparing the mandibular master cast, we also have the landing area to deal with. In front of you is the impression of an actual patient. You will notice that the peripheries of this uh, impression are rolled, both here in the buckle and in the labial region, and over on in the lingual area. We have a nice rolled margin, again created by the soft tissues of the mouth and the tongue. On the impression for this exercise taken from the mannequin, you will notice that we have the roll for the periphery, but we also have the landing area, particularly in the uh, tongue region. It is this landing area that we will be uh, removing and cutting free. Again, with the scissors, we will proceed down the lingual area here and cut away the rubber base that has recorded the landing area of the Visident model. You will notice we have already removed the landing area on the labial and buccal regions in order to save time, and we will illustrate just the removal of the rubber in the lingual area. The scalpel blade uh, also can be used to remove the landing edge reproduction. A mixture of pumice and impression plaster will be used to box this impression. Place approximately one cup of pumice to three cups of impression plaster in the rubber bowl and mix to create a uniformity between these two stones and the stone and pumice. And then place approximately enough water into the bowl in order to create a loose mix or a fluid mix and spatulate this until the pumice and impression plaster is well wetted uh, with the water. When the mixture is uh, completed, uh, place a mound on a glass slab and then invert the mandibular impression into this mound of pumice and impression plaster carefully vibrating the impression to position, and then teasing the pumice impression plaster mixture up to the edges of the impression. Approximately one to two millimeters of the rubber should be exposed. You will notice that if the mixture is a loose mixture, that one can very, very carefully tease this mixture up to the edges of the impression. There is ample time, working time, to, to develop the appropriate configuration in the pumice and impression plaster. After you have uh, made the modifications to the uh, impression plaster and pumice mixture, it can be given sufficient time to set and the final trimming will be performed with the model trimmer. After the plaster is set, the union between the impression plaster a mixture and the rubber base is carefully trimmed with a laboratory knife. The final modification of this mixture uh, and impression plaster is 
trimmed on the model trimmer. In order to save time, we have already trimmed that on a, another impression, and we will proceed with the boxing from this point on. You will also notice how smooth we have made the impression plaster and pumice mixture in the tongue space. And this is necessary in order to create a smooth area on the master cast. We now take and paint the impression plaster base with sticky wax. And this is to again facilitate the attachment of the boxing strip. Following around, applying this sticky wax. After this is completed, the boxing strip is attached to this base. The sticky wax permits the adherence of the boxing strip to the pumice impression plaster base. Again, we seal the end of the boxing strip and the main sealing of the wax strip is done on the inferior border or the lower border of the impression plaster and pumice base. Following around here with the hot end of the number seven spatula, you will notice that it seals quite nicely to this mix. And that completes the joining of the wax. One point we should bring out at this time is the relationship of the boxing strip to the impression itself. Again, the necessity for the base to be approximately half inch in height. You will notice that we have tried to carefully uh, position the impression within the boxing strip to create this one half inch in height to the base. The final step before being ready to pour the impression in dental stone is to paint on the surface of the impression plaster and pumice a tinfoil substitute. In this instance, we are using the L coat, but any foil substitute is satisfactory. After complete, completing the painting of the foil substitute, we may then pour the master cast in the yellow dental stone. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.